Hello everyone and welcome to Victoria's Action Figure Cantina. Today we're having a look at the Hasbro Star Wars The Force Awakens, Sidon Ithano and First Mate Quiggled 3 3 quarter inch scale figure 2 pack. As we have seen before with multi-packs in the Force Awakens line, we get the same style packaging. It's got Kylo Ren at the top. It's got some images there on the side of both of the characters. We get a look at some of the other figures from the line. And then a description of these two characters right here. It says, the era of frontier lawlessness that followed the Galactic Civil War led to the rise of the colorful pirate Sidon Ithano, the subject of many an exaggerated cantina tale. And then for first mate Quiggold, it says, the first mate to the dashing side on Ithano, Quiggold handles the pirate's business. Often in need of fresh hands aboard his pirate vessel, Quiggold recruits those looking for work in spaceport cantinas and taverns. So I got this set off uh, eBay from um, Hasbro's toy shop. And uh, that's basically Hasbro's eBay store. And it was for $14.99. I hadn't seen it in stores at the time. I have since then. But I really wanted these two figures because not only are there aliens in here, but they look really cool. And I just looked at very nice sculpts. I'm going to go ahead and get these unboxed and then we'll take a closer look and see what they're like. All right, you guys. So here is this odd couple out of the box. And as you can see, very nice sculpts. I think that uh, Hasbro does a pretty good job when it comes to aliens. And uh, with these Force Awakens aliens we've been reviewing, um, they've been doing a pretty good job for the most part. I think that these look pretty spot on. Let's go ahead and focus first on Sidon Ithano and then we'll take a look at Quiggold. So again, looking at the sculpt of the figure, I think that it does look very, very nice. Proportions on it seem to be uh, pretty realistic. I have found that it's a little bit difficult to stand, uh, possibly in part because the, the cape is a little heavy, um, but also the feet just don't balance all that well. Uh, I mean, it's not impossible to get it to stand as you can see, but you do kind of have to tweak the legs just a little bit give you a close up here at the head and uh, you can see it looks pretty good. I mean, obviously he's wearing a helmet, so you're not going to see what he looks like underneath, but um, I believe this is a Kalish helmet is what I remember reading from the Star Wars, The Force Awakens visual dictionary. Looking at it, it's pretty good. It's got a nice little bit of gloss to it. And then the rest of the costume is pretty nicely textured there on the shirt. He's got some uh, armor there on his uh, forearms. He's got uh, his pants there. He's got some boots on uh, that also look pretty armored up. All in all, very nicely textured uh, on the back side there. That's what you get. Looks pretty decent. And then the cape here is pretty nicely done. It is very nicely textured and uh, very interesting shape that it has to it. Again, it is a little heavy, so it does kind of weigh him back a little bit, but he's not impossible to stand. It's just a little bit difficult to get him to do so. In terms of articulation, uh, Sidon Ithano has, uh, I'm going to say it's a swivel. It, it might be a ball joint, but it doesn't really get any up or down movement. You can kind of just wiggle it a little bit. I'm going to say it's a swivel because uh, I can't really confirm that it's a ball joint. You can swivel both of his shoulders, of course, and you can swivel both of his legs about that much. Um, so, I mean, very lightly articulated, but for what it lacks in articulation, it certainly makes up for in sculpt because it does look very nice. Mr. Ithano also comes with a blaster, and I think that it looks pretty decent. Uh, there's really not a whole lot to it. Can't really say a whole lot about it because it's very thin and I mean it's it's pretty rigid. Now it does seem to have a little peg as you can see right there in the center but if you look at the figure there's nowhere to peg it onto his belt which seems kind of like an oversight maybe I don't know. Um, there is a weapon there that's uh, holstered onto his uh, side right there but you can't take it out of the holster it's like molded in place uh, unfortunately. He does seem to hold the weapon pretty well and now let's turn our attention to Quiggold, who is the additional figure in this set. And uh, I think that this one especially looks very good, very much has an alien look to it that is uh, quite Star Wars-y. It just looks great. Um, interestingly, he does have the peg leg, so he probably was in battle or something or got into a spaceship accident and uh, that cost him his one of his legs. And uh, I mean, for the most part, it, it looks good. I mean, if you were to put this like in your Jabba's Palace diorama or even your Mos Eisley Cantina, it'd probably look pretty much at home. It, it, it's a very nice looking sculpt uh, to be sure and very much looks like what we saw in the film. And uh, I dig it. I'm mean, just looking at it up close. They did a really nice job capturing the likeness. The eyes are very nicely painted. Um, they're very small, but you can kind of see that there is some painted detail in there and they look pretty organic. I like that. The nose is uh, very interestingly, it's situated like up there, kind of high on his head. 
but uh, that's that's great it's just a very cool character design and uh, of course he's got a huge mouth coloration of the head um it's mostly one color but there's a little bit of a wash to it just to bring out some of that detail uh, rest of the uh, head is connected to his hood right here and it has some texturing to it as does the rest of his shirt so I mean that looks really good they didn't go too overboard but you know they give it a fair amount of texture and you know good sculpting on the sleeves uh, rest of the body his pants are pretty textured he's got his right leg which he's wearing a sandal and then on his left leg of course he's got the peg leg which looks pretty cool very unique and uh, all around, I, I really like the aesthetics of this guy. In terms of articulation, um, you can sort of move the head. It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't have any meaningful movement. It, it seems like it is on a swivel, but you're not gonna really get anything out of it just because of the way that the hood is done. He's got swivels at both of these shoulders and they are restricted as you might imagine uh, because of that hood. And then if you move them down, they're still kind of restricted back there. Uh, you can also swivel him at both of the hips he doesn't get a whole lot of movement though, but it's just enough uh, for you to be able to tweak it, you know, to get him to stand just right. And he's actually easier to stand than side on Ithano, even though he has a peg leg, which is interesting. He doesn't come with any weapons or any accessories, which I guess is okay. I don't remember him carrying anything in the film, but it would have been nice to have seen uh, some sort of a pistol or a cane or, you know, just something extra for him to carry. So because Hasbro loves giving us these uh, little weapons inside these uh, two packs, we get a weapon. It's sculpted okay. I mean, you can see some detail in it. The paint is pretty simple, however, and um, it's got a launching missile right here. It's got the little knob that you press to get it out, and I'll just show you what the missile looks like. Um, basically, anything that we've already seen before, not anything too uh, crazy or different. I mean, they usually look something like that. So I'm gonna show you that you can project it. And it actually comes out with a lot of force, ain't gonna lie, it, it works pretty well. So maybe if Quiggold and Sida Nathano got into some sort of a quarrel or one of them turn on the other, you could always use the launching missile to uh, take one of them out. Bullseye. Now, of course, they can't really hold it in any meaningful way because it's just too big. It does have a little bit of a grip on there, though, but yeah, you can put it in his hand, but I mean, it's still going to be too heavy. So no, while I usually don't care for unnecessary pack-ins that aren't related somehow to the film, uh, if they're going to include these kind of odd combined weapons or, you know, armor or whatnot, I prefer things that can shoot uh, missiles because I just love launching missiles. It, it, it's fun. When I was a kid, I used to antagonize my mom with this sort of thing. Just go up to her and boom. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so there you have it. This is the Hasbro Star Wars The Force Awakens, Sidon Ithano and Quiggold, two pack of three and three quarter inch scale figures. For $14.99, it's really not that bad. I do think that these are some of the nicer figures from the Force Awakens line. Yes, they are very simplistic figures, just with five points of articulation a piece. The accessories aren't the best, but from a sculpting standpoint, I think that Hasbro did a really nice job with them. They look very much as they appeared in the film. Paint on them is very good, very clean. And all in all, I'm pretty happy with the figures. Would it be so much more awesome to get super articulated versions of these guys? Of course it would. If you like the alien type characters from the Star Wars universe or the Maz Kanata's uh, aliens from her castle, then I think you're gonna like these two figures. All right, my friends, if you've enjoyed this video, then I do encourage you to please like and subscribe. Be sure to follow me on Facebook and Twitter for the latest news and updates. As always, I want to thank you for watching Victoria's Cantina. Till next time, my friends. Bye-bye.